Hi, my name is Nicole Kupchik and welcome to 10 Minute Tidbits. I'm here with today with Michaela Cordoza. Michaela, can you tell everyone about yourself? Yeah, um, so my name is Michaela, like Nicole said. I'm a fourth year PhD student at the University of Washington in the School of Nursing, and I'm studying patients after cardiac arrest and targeted temperature management. So my background's in critical care. I've been a nurse for about 10 years. Um, I'm really interested in how best to care for patients when they're in that vulnerable stage right after they've had their cardiac arrest for about the first 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, and then I don't know if many of you know my story, but I actually um, was lucky enough to write one of the very first protocols um, in the United States uh, for targeted temperature management. We used to call it therapeutic hypothermia, but um, but there was actually a, a group of us um, at um, in Seattle who uh, wrote one of the first protocols in the U.S. So I've got a ton of experience with this as well. And so Michaela and I, over the years, always talk about TTM. So so let's just kind of start from the beginning. So it was back in 2002. There were two studies published. Out of uh, one out of Europe and one out of Australia, showing that when you took the temperature down uh, to about 32 to 34 degrees Celsius for about 12 to 24 hours after shockable rhythms, there was huge improvement. But I think the one thing to note in those studies is when um, they studied 32 to 34, they were studying it against doing nothing. So basically, it wasn't controlling temperature at all. So they were studying one group where they control the temperature. Uh, really tightly to in the other group just didn't get any temperature control at all and there was huge benefit to controlling temperature so one of the things I want to be really clear about is that this therapy works because there's a lot of people out there now um, that don't think that the therapy works because I think they're just a little confused about some of the recent studies that have been published uh, okay so then let's fast forward so it was 2002 people are starting their protocols and then I will fast forward to 2013 so in 2013 there was a study published by Dr. Nielsen out of Europe and it was called the TTM trial targeted temperature management trial and what he did was a little different so he went under the assumption we know this works like we know 32 to 34 works so what he did was he said let me take one group take them down to 33 degrees and then let's take another group to 36 degrees and compare the two. And the one thing I have to say, it was a super controlled 36 degrees. And what he found was that there are no significant differences between 33 and 36. Agree? Agree. And I think Nicole hit it right on the head where in the TTM trial, they didn't have a control group. It was really a comparative effectiveness trial where you're comparing two therapies and not comparing against nothing. And so really, yeah. it's hard to even compare the studies from 2002, which everyone kind of thinks of the landmark trials for critical care or for cooling compared to the TTM trial. They're really very different. And so you do have to be really careful with abandoning cooling, as some people were saying, right after that study came out. Um, so I totally agree with Nicole. Yeah, it, is, it was crazy. So when the study came out in 2013, so many people completely misinterpreted it. Like, oh, we, we don't have to cool anymore. Yeah. We don't yeah. need to do it. It doesn't work. And it's nuts because he was literally looking for the dose. He wasn't trying to figure, say, like, does this work? He was trying to figure out what dose works. And, and he didn't find any big differences between 33 and 36. But the one thing that caught my eye, and I know Michaela, Michaela is a total research um, guru, but one of the things that caught my eye in Nielsen's trial was the 33 degree group. So imagine, you know, the group that they took down to 33 degrees, they got rewarmed really quickly. So they, he did basically their therapy, not he, he didn't personally do it, just so you guys know. But, um, but in, you know, there were uh, quite a number of different um, uh, hospitals that participated, but in the group that got uh, cooled down to 33 degrees, they rewarmed that group in, on average over six hours. And I know we would never rewarm that quickly. We usually do it over 12 plus hours. So what's your experience with rewarming? Yeah, I think um, the hospital system that I worked for, originally we would rewarm people at about 0.5 degrees, mm -hmm. which was pretty fast, yes. and that's about plus or minus what the Nielsen study did, and um, from that and other more recent research, we've actually decreased our rewarming rate to about 0.25, yes, which is that's pretty common. average, yeah. so definitely um, been showing that slower rewarming is so important, yeah. especially for all of the re-injury patterns that can happen. Um, one interesting thing about the, the original TTM trial is, you know, a lot of the criticism is that it was a European trial. Can we really compare it to the U.S.? Our population is different. The U.S. is so different, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> but um, I heard a talk right after the um, 
paper came out by Dr. Nielsen and he actually said, well, they tried to get U.S. sites, but the U.S. said, you're crazy, it will never get through our IRB, we know oh, 33 works, huh? and so th they were unable to get, um, to get any or get any sites in the U.S. So it's our own fault that, that, we, <laughs> that we didn't have any sites. But um, Dr. Nielsen um, and his team are actually trying to do the TTM2 trial right now. Ooh, this and is interesting. So <laughs> Listen to this. This is fascinating, you guys. It's not anything proprietary. You can go on clinicaltrials.gov and look it up for yourself and find yeah. out all the details. They're still, I think, in works of the design and stuff. But um, that is comparing fever prevention to 33. Which is interesting. Yeah. So um, not sure what all is coming up or when they're starting data collection, yeah, but um, see. keep an eye on the clinical trials. Yeah. You know, and, but I think the bottom line and I, that I want everyone who's listening to this to get is that you should absolutely be controlling temperature after a cardiac arrest. Like no doubt in your mind should you question it. Um, specifically, who is studied? VFib and VTAC. That's who we know absolutely it works on. It's a class one recommendation um, uh, from the American Heart Association. Now, the question everyone's got is like, what about PEA? What about asystole? What about in-hospital arrest? And to be quite frankly honest, they've never been studied in a randomized control trial of that, you know, of, about cooling versus not cooling in that group. So what are your thoughts on non-shuckable rhythms and in in-hospital cardiac arrest? Um, yeah, I agree. You know, the TTM trial did include all comers, so that was really the first trial to actually include a systole PA arrest. Um, um, but there still is a lot of work to be done. There's been some in hospital studies uh, related to uh, TTM, but uh, still kind of the verdict's out. And I think a lot of the question is that exactly. And then also, um, who are the right people to cool? Yeah. And so, like you said, we know cooling works for a specific group, but do we cool all fever arrest? If the patient's been down for 45 minutes and they have no signs of life, do we still cool them? So those are kind of the up and coming questions of, you know, do we take all comers? Yeah. I know at our hospital, if you have a cardiac arrest, especially outside the hospital, we're probably gonna cool you, regardless of if we think you might survive or not, because we don't know. Us too, and we've always kind of taken that yeah. approach of like, let's just cool everyone. Yeah. It's really, if you kind of think about it, it's a pretty inexpensive therapy. Sorry, that's my phone ding ling ling. But um, it's pretty inexpensive therapy to implement, and you know, it, why not is the kind of the question we ask. So, yeah. yeah. So now, fair. here's what AHA says so, AHA, American Heart Association, and ILCOR, who's the International Liaison Committee on Resuscitation, they give non shockable rhythms, PEA, asystole, and in hospital cardiac arrest class one recommendation but based on expert opinion so again not based on randomized control trials so you know I don't know we'll see my uh, Michaela and I are both going to um, a big conference in Miami in March just if you guys want to come join us we're gonna go to Flamingo what's that mangoes mangoes yeah. is the yeah <laughs> we're gonna go to mangoes and go dancing no I'm just joking but um no actually we're not joking are we? <laughs> but um but we're gonna go to chillin at the beach conference which is in Miami uh, this March and hopefully just kind of see what's the new latest greatest kind of thoughts and information uh, so I, I we're gonna do an update in Miami but we're yeah. gonna do it from the beach and make yeah. you guys all jealous South Beach March. South Beach, South beach. We'll be 10 minutes out. yeah except I'm not wearing bikini <laughs> I don't know, but anyway, but, uh, but we'll definitely give you updates from South Beach and let you guys know, you know, what the new news is from the conference. So, but bottom line, absolutely cool your VFib, VTAX, everyone else, kind of figure out PEA, ACE in hospital, figure out what your hospital and, uh, you know, policies are, and, and I would say kind of go by that. So, any closing thoughts on cooling? Um, I would say my closing thought would be choose a temperature. Yes. Don't go back and forth between temperatures um, yeah. because that also could be detrimental. So um, if your patient's cooled to 33 and there's no other indications to rewarm them, don't, you know, then rewarm them to 36. Keep them at 33. 33 for the duration of the cooling period. Yeah, so it's basically like pick a dose and stay there. You know, one other thing I want to recommend is, uh, or not recommend, but just mention, is that there's actually some newer data coming out now. People are now, that have gone to 36 degrees, they're now looking at their data. And there was a paper that was published by Dr. Bray and Dr. St Stephen Bernard, who out of Australia, and, um, and they did kind of a before and after looking at the different dose therapy of 33 versus 36, and their outcomes did not trend in the right direction. And I know there are other hospitals in the U.S. who are now starting to look at their data after going to 36 degrees and are finding that it's actually not as good. 
So have you like what have you heard anything or what's your? Yeah, I definitely would keep an eye on that um, and track your own in hospital uh, yeah. cooling outcomes. I think that's really important to know how you're doing. Are your outcomes stacking up with what you did before? or um, what the national trend is and really make sure that you know what you're doing and making sure, like Nicole said, to keep patients at the temperature and not let them vary, you know, super high and low um, during the cooling period. So like if don't you're- Don't let them vacillate and bounce up and yeah, down. If yeah, if you're at 36, don't let them be 36.4, 36.2, 37.8, um, because that also could impact. You're not really targeting the temperature and maintaining it. Yeah, so which can be challenging. So, but we're gonna shoot another video Video, and we're gonna talk about shivering and kind of management of the patient while they're being cooled. So, um, so tune in for that one. That'll uh, probably come in the next couple weeks. But, um, but thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, pop me an email, ncupchick at gmail.com, or um, check out check me out on Facebook. So, um, my Facebook page is Nicole Cupchick Consulting. I'm also on Instagram at Nicole Cupchick. So, pop me a message. Let me know what questions you guys got. Have and I'll uh, include Michaela. We'll try to get your questions answered for you. So, thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>